So they are constant rank in the neighborhood of the point. And if they are analytic, they are. If D, K are regular, then they are invariant under transformation and feedback. The, not invariant, I'm sorry. The dimension. If they are regular, the dimension of each D, K, the dimension of each D, K is constant, is invariant under feedback. With respect to with respect to transformation t of x and alpha and beta whatever any feedback or any transformation move okay okay how how this relates so so we're considering here uh, linear in control feedback transformations right oh yeah we don't consider non-linear no because the, again the problem was linear in control so. Why do you want to ruin this? Actually, you want to achieve even linear state and control. So, okay. Um, what is regular? A constant track in a neighborhood of the point. Doesn't drop dimension in a neighborhood of the point. Okay, so let's see. Well, what does this relate? How does this relate? The point is you have a system. And where are you going to? I'm going to a linear system. Paradise, AX, BU, or PV, right? And these guys are indeed regular, actually, all the vectors. So in the transformed space, these are the Bs, right? And these are ABs, correct? A squared Bs, and so and so. So, actually, for sure they are regular. Okay, they are regular, then under feedback, and for the change, if you want to go the other way around, then these also must be constant. This must be uh, uh, the, the rank or the dimension doesn't change. Okay, so the rank when I'm going from the linear system to the nonlinear system back, the rank or the dimension of these guys should not change under this transformation. And in particular, if this is n minus 1, I know the rank, I know the dimension. What is the dimension of this guy n minus 1 for a linear system? This is B's, AB's, yada yada, up to AN minus 1B. What is the rank of this guy if you're looking for a linear controllable system? M. M. So it has to be satisfied for your system as well because the dimension is constant. So the span of G's, FG's, FFG's, yada yada, here it's N minus 1. And we're not asking for involutivity, we're asking that it's all rank n. Each condition is necessary, together they are sufficient. And we'll have a if and only if here. Okay? We can try and do examples now. So this is this is the main result that we have been discussing so far. Any question? So the system, the, the system has, to, has to be controllable? Has to be linearly controllable. Remember, we said if f is at the equilibrium point, we, you guys computed this before. You computed this for me. Um, so this is, okay, g is, so if you linearize, you have a f plus g, g. If you linearize, what do you get? Well, the value at the point, because this is spared at the point, right? At x naught. So the value at the point is the B's, right? These guys, when you linearize, the F matrix is replaced by partial F bar partial the Jacobian, which is A. So this is A, B's, right? A is the Jacobian of your matrix, and these are the B's, and so and so. So this is A n minus 1 B. Where A and B here are the linearized version of your nonlinear dynamics. So we're asking that if you linearize, the linearization should be controllable. So this second condition is equivalent to linear controllability. Okay? The system. And it makes sense. You're hoping to get a linear controllable system. Okay, your system should be linearly controllable, right? It makes sense. Although linear controllability are not uh, I mean this is technical details, that's okay. We we already discussed this here. If you're hoping to get a linear system, there are constant dimensions here, so you should be have constant dimension over here. And the last condition ever gives you linear control. So that's it. This is the theory. Any any question about this theory? So far? Yes. Yeah. So so Brockett said that they should be constant, but he's, he didn't say that they should have 
Yeah. You're right. invariant under feedback and coded transformation. So, so this does this theorem uh, exclude uh, the case where I can have a feedback transformation that gives me a non-controllable linear uh, system? Because in these uh, counterexamples, they have the distributions here before going over there. This distribution is not constant rate. So we exclude. We have to exclude these cases. He is here. They are asking that if they are regular, then this is the case. So for your cases, they are not regular. If you go and check the OS example, the counter example that he provided, 2012, it's not regular. Broke it himself in this paper. He provided counter examples, but they are not regular. If they are regular, then you guarantee that they are don't change on the feedback, and we know for sure that they are regular for the linear version. Because the linear version are constant vectors. Constant vectors. Okay, wow, I took too much time. So I think we can give a, a quick example. I intended to give two, but so there is no time. Yes, but is the Sure, sure. Okay, so I can start from a non-controllable system. Okay, a non-controllable linear system. Right? And I can make up a transformation that gives me Non-controllable, just a, just a non-controllable linear system. Linear system, yeah. I can start from non-controllable linear system, and I can make up a transformation <coughs> to make this system linear numbly, and I know that the transformation exists because I made it up. Right? Okay. So. And I can make it regular. You can make it regular. Yeah, I can make the, this transformation regular because I, I I can make it up the way whatever I want, right? You start with, but you don't have this condition, and, and the, the last one. It can, it can, it, they can have constant rank, but it's. I said it's uncontrollable. It have control, yes. We just, we just got this guy, the last one. This is the last one. They are not all of it. What, what's the problem? I'm saying so. Brockett said that they are regular, means that they they have the same dimension, right? They have the same dimension, yes. Okay. But not necessarily equal to n. They can yeah. have so one of these like oh, yeah, d1 yeah. and d2 yeah, yeah, sure, have sure, the sure. same the same uh, rank. Sure, sure, sure. Right? Okay. So in this case. Uh, in this case, for example, the the system might so the so you have a linear system that is uncontrolled. Then you're gonna do what? I'm gonna make a nonlinear transformation. A so regular nonlinear transformation for this linear system to come up with a nonlinear system. Control you have a non-linear system. Everything, right? Control of five. Control of five. Okay. Yeah. This system is it is not controlled. It's not controllable. Not linearly controllable. Okay. And because it's okay, because. I, I made it up, so I know it's not controllable anyways, right? Okay. But there does exist a transformation that puts this non-linear system that I obtained into mm -hmm. a linear no. system that is controllable. No, because uh, this transformation would not be a uh, diffusion I would not. Yeah, I mean, I so I, you, you, okay. you come up with one way of the transformation, not the other way. So I'm telling you, these guys, I'm telling you that this is an necessary condition. What do you mean by necessary condition? Well, for these guys, for your transformation to be full rank and to be diffeomorphism, you need these guys, you need this last condition. Because just do it in coordinates, you will you, you see it obviously. Okay. Because actually, this is not how they explain it. If you go to uh, Sastry, for example, or this is not how they explain it. They go right away and say, if I have any transformation, and for this transformation to be diffeomorphism, I need for this transformation to be diffeomorphism and to get the input state in your usability, I need this condition. Actually, I mean there are several technical details, but you can see it in coordinates very easy. What I'm saying is that your example is correct, very fine, except the transformation will not be inverted. So uh, let's get an example quickly. So I have here, um, say, the inverted pendulum kind of thing, which is my favorite. OK. So I have x1 dot. So x1 is the theta of the pendulum. x2 is uh, the, the theta dot. So this is just x2, right? Here, this is the theta double dot, so this is actually some damping I'm adding. And we have the g over L the sine theta, so this is sine x1. And we're saying that you have a, a, a torque at the, at the pivot. 
you have a torque here, tau. So this is x1. This is the mass m. That is unity or something. But this torque coming from a motor, and the motor has some lag, so we'll account for that lag. Just to make the problem more complicated. So this is x3. And x3 has some dynamics. Tau x3 equals here, so they have the negative 1 over tau x3 and plus 0, 0, 1 over tau in your torque. Oh, this is this is moment, not tau, okay? Because I use tau for the time constant. So I have my f from my g, there is non-linearity here, so x we can handle actually much more non-linearities, but just just an example, it doesn't matter at all. You do the, the procedure. We need to do the checks first. So the first check is I need to compute this guy. So G and F G. So okay, I have G. Let's compute F G. Just saving some time for you because I just did it right before the class. Wow, I forgot. So this is I guess this is one over tau squared, and this is negative one over tau. Hopefully this is correct. Yes, it is. Okay. So delta is span of G and FG. So G is 0, 0, 1 over tau, or whatever. You can write just G and FG, right? And we need to check what? We need to check what? What do we need to check? In volatility. Very good. How do you check in volatility? The lead bracket between any two vectors should be in the group. So the lead bracket between G and FG, what's that? What's that? G is a constant vector. FG is a constant vector. That was just a number. So the lead bracket between constant vector is what? Zero. zero. And zero, of course, in the delta, because it's in the span, right? OK, so delta is involutive. By Frobenius, it's integrable. That's great. So the I condition is done. The second, I need to check linear controllability, which is G, F, G, and F squared G. So I need to compute the other lead bracket. This is F, F, G. This was, I guess, also 1 over tau negative B over tau plus 1 over tau squared, 1 over tau cube. And please check it. I don't remember. So uh, I have the span of G, F, G, and F, F, G. And please look at these. So this covers the third direction, this covers whatever, the second, and this covers the third or any combination. This is the third, this is second, this is first, for example. So, so this, the span here is R3. System is linearly controllable. I'm sure that I can do that. Let's do it. So, so far, this is not constructed. No, it is. Does it give us the transformation? Yeah, we already wrote equations. Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, actually, <clears throat> if you remember, LG T1 is 0, LG right? T2 is 0. And so on and so, and here LF G1 was T2. We usually start here and go like zigzag, like this. Okay? It's T1, so this one, one. right? LF T1. Yeah, thank you. LF G1. Let's do this. LG T1 is 0, right? So uh, here is G, so just differentiate your T1 with respect to the third thing. So 1 over tau partial t1 partial x3, this is 0, which means that t1 should be function of all variables, x1, x2, x3. So here just t1 is function of x1 and x2 only, right? Okay, so we got this from here, we go over there, this is exact kind of thing. So uh, let's now differentiate t1 along f. So we have x2 partial t1, partial x1, plus this guy, this whole bracket. I will carry out this bracket with me. Okay. So 
times partial T2, partial X2. And I have this guy times partial T1, T partial X3. Partial T1, partial X3 is 0, so this is 0. This should be equal T2. OK? So if I, I have an expression for T2 now, and we go this direction, LGT2, right, is 0. OK? So let's differentiate this guy along the third. So again, what's the derivative along the third, along x3? It's here just 1, right? Times partial t1 partial x1. So this is 1 over tau times 1 times partial t1 partial x2, I guess. This is 0, correct? If you want to tell it here is g over L sign and x3. I'm differentiating with respect to x3. Here is the only x3 is 1 times this guy. And I'm multiplying by 1 over tau. Gives me 0. So this tells you what? t1 also doesn't depend on x2. So t1 is just t1 of x1. So actually, it gives you t2 now in a simpler form because this is 0. So if I have here is x2 times t1 prime. OK? Any question? So uh, yeah, this is just the last elements. So LF t2 was just negative alpha over beta, right? No, sorry. The left T2 is just T3, so that's okay. We get T3, right? So let's differentiate this guy along the vector field F. It's so, you know, straightforward. So let's differentiate it here. It's X2 times the derivative of this guy with respect to X1. So this is X2 T1 double prime. And uh, the bracket that I carry with me, the derivative with respect to x2, so t1 prime. And then derivative with respect to x3, this is 0. This is 0 plus 0. So here is the definition for t3. So the final thing, the final thing is Lg t3, this should not be 0. And when you get it, you're going to call it 1 over beta. 